Welcome to The Journey. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Robin Durham, and I have in the studio with me Gabrielle Delgado. She's been teaching a Bible study to us on covenant. It's been such a blessing, Gabrielle. We appreciate it. Oh, I love it, Robin. I, you know, that's one of my favorite subjects. Amen. And something that you've studied for so many yes. years and shared many, many times. But I've been enriched greatly, and we pray you have as well. And we encourage you, if you didn't get to watch the all the series. I think we may be on the 12th week at this point. You can go to the KPLE website and click on programs and you'll be able to watch any of the episodes. So we encourage you to do that. We have covered six covenants already and we are about to step into the new covenant. So yes. we did take care of, went over more than once, some of the highlights even yes of all of the other covenants that God made. There was a covenant in Eden, uh, and there was a covenant with Adam, there was a covenant with Noah, a covenant with Abraham, a covenant with Moses, and most recently we finished up studying the covenant with David. And that one to me is always the highlights because yes. of the sure mercies of David yes. that God repeats and acts as we went over last week that Jesus is the fulfillment of that covenant. And exactly. Gabrielle's going to be teaching this week as we move in to studying the new covenant. So thank you, Gabrielle. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. And uh, we basically what we are going to be doing now is as we're starting in the new covenant, it's kind of go back a little bit to see in the Old Testament uh, where God has uh, spoken. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the fulfillment of the Mosaic Covenant is actually what takes us into the new because we see in that we could not, man cannot keep covenant on his own. Amen. The laws were given to show us that we cannot keep it. And so God, even from Eden, again, I always want to emphasize that, that his, God's original plan is to take us mm -hmm. back to that of that, that covenant of Eden where no shame, no sin, and, and basically this is what Jesus fulfilled, mm -hmm. but man could not do it. And so in uh, Ezekiel 36, 24 and 29, he, uh, we're gonna go over some of the uh, uh, prophecies and, and things. And so God spoke in, in Ezekiel 36 and said, for I will take you this was the Israelites from this among is verse the heathen. 24. Verse, I'm so sorry. Uh, verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather out of all, uh, gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water up on you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to Hallelujah. walk in my statues. And he shall, ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers. And ye shall be my people and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call for the corn and I will increase it and lay no famine upon you. So that was already an awesome promise. And knowing, looking through that, uh, you see, we can't keep that ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, that's what the law was designed to show us our sinfulness, to Amen. show us that we cannot keep it. I love verse 26 where it says, I will put my spirit within you. Yes. It had come upon them before, yes. but we are coming into that place of the spirit of the Lord living on the inside of us. Yes, and, and actually in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, it only came up on the prophets and those that were chosen, it didn't come on the, uh, the total pop population, right. you know. And so again, that's where it's seen that as he was talking about Israel, of course, we are engrafted because as the Gentiles that, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, that was, an, an, again, an awesome prophecy that I felt was so so necessary to, to share. Mm -hmm. And then uh, showing again our we cannot keep it. It's in Romans 3, 21 through 20, 
4 is, but now a righteousness from God apart from law mm -hmm. has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus mm -hmm. Christ or Christ Jesus. And uh, again, Galatians 3, 24 and 25 puts it this way. So the law was put in charge, the lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the super supervision of the law. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it shows that the Mosaic law pointed to the need for a savior, pointed uh, to him, you know, even then, and said that, uh, Jesus Christ himself said that he did not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill yeah, it. Amen. And uh, because there is still a law, and the law is love. Mm -hmm. The love God first, and the love our neighbors, the love each other. And of course, we know that that encompasses everything. It says it fulfills the whole law. It fulfills the whole law, it sure does. And uh, so, salvation has always been obtained by faith. We go back to Abraham, when yes, we studied yeah. Abraham, it was his faith, it wasn't law, it wasn't anything that he did per se. He was put to sleep, in fact, you know, so yes. he would be out of the way. And uh, so even there in the new covenant, now we see that, and, and that's the wonderful thing, we cannot break that covenant because it's made between the Father and Jesus. And, and so we, we get to be partakers, but we're going to get to that later on. Uh, so the new covenant was prophesied in Jeremiah 31, uh, 31 through 34. And Robin, you want to read that sure. for us? <clears throat> Excuse me. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, where I, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, this is verse 33 now, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God and they will be my people. Hallelujah. Verse 34, no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Isn't that awesome? It's a great promise. And, Thank you, Lord. Uh, you know, it says that <clears throat> they shall all know me. The word know actually means to be intimately acquainted mm -hmm. with me. There it is again, it, it's that, that, that Jesus in us. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and even again from the Garden of Eden, God wanted intimacy with, with mankind. And yes. he wanted a family. And uh, so praise God for that. Okay, now we fast forward 400 years, uh, which is the time when between Malachi and the birth of Jesus, the new, the new what we call the New Testament. And those 400 years are also called the years of silence because there were no prophets. There was, we have no words in, in, in that period of time. And uh, so uh, there, there are hundreds of prophecies about Messiah in the Old Testament, and we're mm -hmm. going to look at some of them. I, uh, and again, I, I so encourage you all, you can Google everything nowadays, yes, you know, just put that in. Uh, and I, I saw some things on uh, chosen people, uh, some prophecies that uh, from the Old Testament concerning Jesus, that we can see that he is Messiah, Amen. you know, because that's important that, that we see he is the one. Yeah, I love it. You know, it, it is such a continuance and such a comfort. Yes. Even when the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls were found mm -hmm. uh, after like 2,000 years, yeah. some of the most ancient writings were found in the, in the 60s, actually, uh, of the book of Isaiah in <clears throat> those many prophecies in the book of Isaiah about Jesus yes. coming, you know, yes. and how that just anchors you, secures yes. you. Uh, you're already walking by faith. We already believe, but 
seeing the prophecies in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and then seeing the fulfillment in the yes. New Testament is just, uh, it increases your faith. It, it does. And it also, you know, we, we're told that we are supposed to have a word for everyone that asks us a question. True. You know, that's another aspect of it as well. You know, that we will know how to answer mm -hmm. when people give a question, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, this is in no wise exhaustive. You know, I, I just uh, True. picked picked out some. Uh, we're going to look at, at seven from an article, uh, again, from the chosen people that, that I had Googled. And prophecy one was that the origin and birthplace of the Messiah, and that was uh, in Micah 5.2 in the Old Testament, but you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be the ruler mm -hmm. in Israel, whose going forth are from of old, from everlasting. Lasting. Hallelujah. And the fulfillment of that is in Matthew 2, 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east, came to Jerusalem. And so right there we see the fulfillment mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Then the prophecy number two, that, uh, a dis that he's a descendant of Abraham, Messiah is. And uh, Genesis 12, one through three, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, will curse them, him who curses you, and in you all Amen. the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that fulfillment, again, we see in uh, Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, in the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Right there it, it declares it, and, and you know, I, I just love it when we see, you know, and even Jesus so often, and, and, and you know, the disciples and, uh, Paul, all of them, so many times refer to Old Testament, yes, Testament scriptures. That's what they had you know, studied. That's what they and had. And they yes. saw him yes. manifest right yes. before, their very, before their very eyes. A friend of mine always says of uh, Simeon, he actually got to hold in his hands that the promise. The promise. You know, and speaking of, you know, so many of us have promises from God that are still in the faith yes. arena, so to speak. Yes. But a day comes when yes. you actually get to hold the promise. When the manifestation yes. comes, you know, that, that manifestation. Yes. Oh, that's so good. And prophecy three is uh, that Messiah would come from the house of David. And in 2 Samuel 7, 12 and 13, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will sit up your seat after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the mm -hmm. throne of his kingdom forever. And, you know, it, it's, it's so wonderful to me that uh, knowing uh, that way back then, even though they didn't see the fulfillment of the promise, yet they still believed, Amen. and they still held on to uh, what we're saying. And the, the fulfillment of uh, that Messiah would be of the house of David is in Luke 3:31, the son of Malaya, the son of Menon, the son of Meth Methata, the son of Nathan, the son of David. Mm -hmm. And he often is referred to even as the son of David, yes. you know, so that's not just the only scripture. I just pulled out a few. Uh, and again, I encourage you, get in there, study, search it out, you mm -hmm. know, there's uh, so much more. Every time I go in the Word, I find more. Mm -hmm. Every time mm -hmm. I, I, I see new things, <clears throat> I see it in new lights. And then prophecy number four is that he's born of a virgin. And that's Isaiah seven fourteen. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And the fulfillment is in Matthew 1, 18. 22 and 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, mm -hmm. which is translated God with us. And, and there we see, Amen. you know, the, Amen. Prophecy number five, 
is that Messiah would be God in the flesh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That's Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom mm -hmm. to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And the f uh, fulfillment of that is again, the book of the Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. You know, when you were reading these two Isaiah scriptures, Isaiah 7, 14, the sign that would be behold a virgin, and then the Isaiah 9, um, I'll, I can't, I immediately remembered being in Israel in 2003 mm -hmm. and being in one of the gift shops where a lot of the, the nativity were, was carved wood and just many other things that we were looking at and possibly wanting to bring home as a memento. Uh, uh, our tour guide, he was a very young man, I want to say in his early 20s, he and I had uh, shared some conversation and had, you know, developed a little bond. And anyway, he came over to me and asked, it wasn't our tour guide, excuse me, it was the guy that was guarding our bus, um, came over and asked the meaning of some of the things. And boy, the Spirit of the wow. Lord rose up mm. on the inside of me. You know, it's not like I've memorized some of these scriptures, but I was able out of the Old Testament prophecies mm. and promises to say, well, in uh, the Torah or in, you know, your Bible, in, yeah. in the, the Bible that you use and read every day in synagogue or when you attend synagogue, it said, and mm -hmm. then it says in, you know, the fulfillment. It was a powerful wow. time. He was very stunned. He was very captured by it. I can imagine. Amen. I can imagine. That's awesome. Uh, and then prophecy number six is the humility of Messiah. And mm -hmm. that is in Zechariah 9.9. 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Mm -hmm. Wow. Fulfillment of that is in John 12, 12 and 14. Of course, it's in some of the other gospels as well, but I'm, mm -hmm. you know, a great multitude when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written. Amen. And that was a sign mm. of being crowned king too. Yes. Because if you look back when Absalom tried to take the kingdom from David, yes. they put him on a donkey right. and brought him in yes. and did the same thing. So this was very, very symbolic to Israel. They knew when Jesus yes. showed up on a donkey, yes. what was absolutely being said. said there yes. was no doubt. There was no doubt. Mm -hmm. There was no doubt. And, and see, this is something that we need to understand too, is that even Jesus, some of the things that he spoke, them knowing history and knowing culture Absolutely. understood much more. You know, that's why I think it's so important for us to understand some of this because mm -hmm. again, our Western mind, we lose so much because of that. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then prophecy number seven is the suffering servant, and and I just love that. And Robin, do you want? We'll just read all of Isaiah 53. I can find it, Gabrielle. I'm without. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll have to do it on my phone. Sorry, that that's terrible. But when you use electronic devices uh, for the last number of years, yeah. going back to a paper Bible, unless I have it marked, takes way too long. So you want me to read Isaiah 53? Yes, oh, Awesome, awesome. Yes, I love it such a beautiful picture. 
who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Verse three, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That means mental God. peace yes. as well. Yes. And with his stripes, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of, a, of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was c cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people he was stricken and he made his grave with the wicked and the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the lord to bruise him he put him to grief when thou shall make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hands he will see of he shall see of the travail of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquity therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and bare the sin of many and made intercession for transgressors. That's a, that's a complete picture. It is. Such a picture it, it of is, Jesus. It's such a picture of, of his suffering, his suffering and, and his purpose, mm -hmm. you know, he knew that that was the purpose uh, that he came into into the world for. Yes, ma'am. And uh, so we're we're going to uh, I'm going to read some in John one one uh, the fulfillment. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That shows that He is God. Amen. Matthew eight sixteen and seventeen. Since we had a whole chapter here, uh, there are uh, much many more scriptures than than before on, on some of the other ones. Oops, wait a minute. I I can read that okay. one. Okay, Matthew, you you can maybe get the next one, Gabrielle. While I'm okay. reading, maybe we can alternate. Uh, Matthew eight sixteen seventeen. It says, "When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out." the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bare our, our sicknesses. Sickness. This is so good. Isn't this you awesome? Know, it's so good to do. Because it so shows us what he did. Amen. What one are you? Okay. Uh, 60. Well, I have a, that scripture is not. Well, let's look at 27. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look at 27, 12 through 14. It says, and when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, hearest thou not the many things they witness against them, against thee? And he answered uh, him to never a word insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. So he didn't speak a word. It goes right. back to the scripture that talks about he was like a lamb to slaughter, yes. silent before Silent his before. And then uh, and also that he was uh, uh, crucified with transgressors in verse 38. Then were, were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left. And mm -hmm. again, that shows Amen. And that was um, Matthew 38, 57 through 60. So yes. Mark, I've got that one, Mark 15. 
in verse 27 through 28, I guess. Let's see. And with him they crucified two thieves, and the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Amen. So that actually tells us uh, the scripture that it, mm -hmm. and then in Luke 23, 33, and when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. So there's mm -hmm. quite a few scriptures where that confirm that. In, Ma in Romans 4, 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So that's the fulfillment uh, that he was, um, he bore our iniquity and yes. offenses, amen. Yes, and in 1 Corinthians 15, 3, it says, for I del delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. And so all you know, through the Old Testament covenants, we've emphasized the importance of the lineage, you know, and we see that again in Matthew uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. That's you know, a we're full not list. going to read it. Yeah, it's yeah. a full list of the lineage. Yes. yes. Starting from Ed all the way to uh, Joseph, Joseph, the father, uh, earthly father of Jesus. So, where all the generations are listed. And then Matthew 1, 18 through 24, we read about the virgin birth right. again. Amen. And in Isaiah 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself, we read that earlier, gave a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And you know, and it goes back to the first, uh, for, to, to the chapter three in Genesis, yes. you know, where it says that the that woman was the first shall prophecy bear, of that, Jesus. that was the first prophecy right there that uh, of, of, of Jesus right, right there. Genesis 3 and verse 15, yes. you know, where it talks about that uh, she, she would have a seed that would yes. crush the head of yes. Satan, that Satan would bite at his heel and bruise his heel, yes. but that Jesus himself would be that seed, that son of David, yes. actually, that would crush the head of Satan and redeem us back, yes. redeem us back yes. and fulfill all the prophecies. Well, we're out of time. So <laughs> it was so good to go over some of those prophecies. Yes. I love to do that. And as Gabrielle has encouraged everybody to do that, I would. Uh, you can yes. Google prophecies, Old Testament yes. prophecies of, of concerning the Messiah. Yes. So you want to do those things because yes. I, I I don't know it, it is very um, uplifting and it builds your inner man up it does. to get that firmness yes. and again as you said Gabrielle to have an answer if yes. someone asks a question well thank you so much for watching us today on the journey we'll see you next week. Find